Hey friendlies, it's Carolyn and welcome back to my RV life. I am uh, boondocking in some national, some very um, different national forest today. I'm not going to tell you where I am. I'm going to save that for a surprise next week. I have a pretty big announcement that I think might surprise some of you, maybe not surprise others <laughs> of you. Um, but if you want to be in the know when I do announce um, my location, uh, be sure to subscribe. I think I'm going to hope it's here. <laughs> if it's not here, it's on the other side. I need to get used to pointing in the right place. So if you want to be in the know and get updates from me, feel free to uh, subscribe to my channel and, uh, and get notifications when I post a new uh, video. Today I'm going to talk about the do's and don'ts of boondocking or dry camping in an RV. And uh, a lot of you have been asking me a lot of questions because you know that most of my life in living in an RV full time is about boondocking. So I'm going to go through three do's and three don'ts when it comes to boondocking or dry camping on public lands that I think will be really helpful and very informative for those of you who are thinking about boondocking. Maybe some of you are already doing it and you're not sure if you're doing it right. Uh, go through three things that should help all of you kind of navigate the whole boondocking dry camping thing. Unsweetened Tazo passion fruit tea. One of my favorites. You may notice I'm in a very remote area and uh, this is what I love to do. I love to travel and navigate and explore in national forests and BLM lands and look for places to camp, uh, dry camp by myself. This is what I've been doing for the last year or so that I've been living so, in an um, RV. In order to talk about the do's and don'ts of boondocking or dry camping, first we need to talk about where you can boondock and dry camp. And the chief areas, uh, the key areas in the United States that you can boondock and dry camp are national forests and BLM lands. And BLM stands for Bureau of Land Management. Those are open public lands that usually allow dispersed camping. So that's what it's called if you're the, the, the official title. <laughs> you're not going to go to a BLM or a national forest website and look for boondocking. It's, they're going to call it dispersed camping. And uh, there are also other federal and state agencies that open up lands for dispersed camping, such as wildlife management areas, which is um, kind of where I'm at right now is also wildlife management areas, um, wildlife refuges that I have stayed at, water districts in certain areas um, or utility districts set aside land for recreation. Uh, so there are different uh, different areas of public lands that you can camp on for free, disperse camping for free. So you need to check with the area that you're going to go to. Look at their website for their rules. Uh, every uh, every agency has slightly different rules, and even different states and different regions within even BLM and um, and national forests, even though they're they're national. Every region has different. Uh, may have different rules. In general, both with national forests and with BLM land, Bureau of Land, land Management lands, you can stay 14 consecutive days before you have to move. But within those limits, um, each district, each agency, um, each regional office might have different rules. So sometimes it's 14 days within a 30 day period. So that means you can stay for 40 days, you need to leave for two weeks, and then you can come back. Uh, but different regions have different rules so you want to make sure you check with the region that you're in or that you plan on visiting before you go so that you know the rules. Somebody has asked me if they enforce it and that really depends on where you go. Uh, I don't think I have ever run into a ranger except maybe in Arizona uh, in Kaibab National Forest and the other one, Coconino. Uh, but I, other than that, I don't think I've ever run into a ranger coming out and checking, you know, to make sure nobody is staying. But I go to some pretty remote areas. You might run into that in the more populated areas around big cities, especially. Uh, so has there been a lot of enforcement? No. I do try to stick within the rules because the rules are here to protect the land for all of us to use and I uh, and I want to make sure the land is here for all of us to use so I that's you know I, I do try to um, follow those rules so that's kind of the first thing about where you can boondock or where you can dry land now I'm going to talk about the three do's of, of boondocking before I talk about the don'ts 
So the first do is you want to make sure you know the rules of the public land, the area that you are visiting. Know what the time limits are. Know what areas are permitted for camping and what might be off limits. Uh, most district offices of both BLM and National Forest have maps that you can get that show what roads are legal for automobiles to be on. Um, in order to minimize impact of all of us being in the wilderness and making sure that it's around for us to use and generations in the future to use, uh, I like to make sure I'm making the smallest impact that I can even in, in Giant Matilda. And that means following the rules, staying on, on designated roads and things like that. So before you do go into any public land for boondocking or dry camping, Check the website, check with the district office, make sure you know the rules and make sure you follow the rules. The second part of that is to make sure you obey no trespassing signs. Sometimes within public lands, there is private property that was grandfathered in before they became public lands. And you will see, uh, probably, I'm gonna say occasionally, but probably more than occasionally, you will see private property signs. Respect those signs, uh, respect people's private property, uh, just in my experience, uh, in I've joked about this before, <laughs> I thought living in an RV meant I was an outlaw. <laughs> I didn't have to obey signs, and uh, I never got away with anything. I never do. I don't know what it is. Um, but, you know, you don't want to get a, a knock on the door in the middle of the night, or worse, you don't want to get intimidated by locals who might be really pissed off about you being on their land. So just make sure you know the rules and obey no trespassing signs. The second do is also just to respect the land um you know there's a lot of us want to use these lands for a lot of different reasons and there are atvs and four-wheelers there's hunters there's hikers there's rvers there's um jeeps you know there's a, a whole bunch of different people who want to use the land for different reasons how I approach it is I try to minimize my impact, like I said earlier. So that means staying on roads, not driving off road uh, and, and, and pouncing on vegetation. Uh, it's kind of the same thing when I'm backpacking. I don't like to put my tent down on fresh vegetation and kind of ruining a tiny little ecosystem there. And I do the same thing in my RV. So do respect the land. Travel only on designated roads. Don't don't tear it up. I, I'm going to do a whole other video on leave no trace because that's something that's very near and dear to my heart. But, uh, you know, even even chopping down trees for firewood and stuff like that, I would recommend not doing those things. Just going in, leaving as, as small an impact as possible. See uh, what's the saying, leave only go, leave only footprints or something like that. So uh, just travel, tread lightly and leave as small an impact as you can on the land. The third do is to pack in what you pack out. Um, and that means taking all your garbage with you. Do not leave your garbage behind. And that includes gray water, which I think I'm gonna talk about in a minute. Yeah, uh, so pack in what you pack out. Uh, don't leave your mess for somebody else to clean up. Try to try to leave, um, you know, no trace that you were there. Don't bother wildlife. Don't bother vegetation and things like that. So just make sure that you are prepared to pack in whatever you pack out. Take your garbage with you. Okay, so those are the three do's. Know the rules of the land, respect the land, and pack in what you pack out. Number, so let's talk about what you don't do when you're boondocking or dry camping in the national forest. Uh, number one, and this is another one I learned the hard way, don't ever block a dirt road. You might be driving around in the wilderness like I've done for miles and miles and miles, haven't seen another person or another vehicle for hours and hours and hours, and finally settle on, you can't find a place to camp, and you finally settle on blocking a tiny little dirt road that looks like hasn't been used in 15 years. Inevitably, somebody is going to come along and need to get by. I swear to God that has happened to me every single time. <laughs> so no matter how faint that dirt road seems and how enticing it might be as a camping spot, do not block a road. Uh, I, I've just never had any success with it. Keep looking until you can find something that you can pull off on the side of the road and be out of the way so that anybody who might want to get by on that road can get by. Where I'm at right now, I happened to, it was, it, I took a long time to find a spot. I ha finally found a dead end road with a circle um, around 
so I was able to find a good camping spot. But, uh, you know, sometimes when you're tired and you're looking around, and maybe that's another thing, get to a place early so you're not tired and, um, you know, you don't have to like park in the middle of the road or park someplace that might not be safe. Uh, um, but yeah, do not block a road because inevitably somebody is going to need to get by. The third, the second don't is do not dump your gray water. People ask me this, and I've got really stern about that, I know. People have asked me, is it legal to dump gray water? No, it's not. It is illegal. And then people want to counter that with, well, campers do it all the time. They wash their dishes and they get rid of it. Well, a camper might have, what, a gallon, maybe a half gallon of water that they fling which disperses it in tiny little drops, you know, disperses, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I guess disperses it throughout. So it's, you know, little pieces of, 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 of food particles or whatever really disperse throughout the woods. My uh, most RV gray water tanks are at least, I think mine is 30 gallons, 20 gallons. And that is all going in one spot in the ground. And let's say best case scenario, you do use natural soaps, Dr. Bronner's for example, and you don't put any chemicals, you don't wash your hair with any normal shampoo, you don't use um, any, any, you know, uh, uh, any detergents or anything like that in your gray water. It still is a alien element in the environment. Even Dr. Bronner's, let's say Cami, Cam, Cam, what's that word? Uh, that Dr. Bronner's soap, even whatever um, pure soap is made out of, or even peppermint. Where I'm at right now, peppermint is not a native species out here, and neither is, oh my gosh, what's that word? Soap. <laughs> whatever that pure, Castile? I don't know, whatever that pure soap is, it's not natural to the environment out here. So what you are doing, even if you are using those natural detergents, is you're invading an environment with stuff that is not natural to that environment. And it's harmful. Uh, you know, a lot of you have heard about invasive species. Just to give you an example, uh, you know, stuff that gets planted or somehow a seed gets planted where it shouldn't, it's not a native species and it ends up drowning out or killing out native species of plants and animals and wildlife and things like that. So same with our gray water. Um, if we're dumping 30 gallons all in a row, we're doing, um, you know, it may not be catastrophic harm, but it is changing the ecosystem. So no, you cannot dump your gray water. Um, even if you use natural soaps, you cannot dump your gray water. So uh, one thing that you can do is just, if you're gonna be boondocking or dry camping, make sure you're set for as long as you're gonna be out there. Make sure your tanks are empty. Make sure your full water is, your, your fresh water is full. Um, but do not be tempted to dump your tanks in the wilderness. For one thing, it's illegal. And for another thing, um, it's just not good for the environment. The third don't is when you are exploring um, national forests and BLM lands for dispersed camping, boondocking, dry camping, don't rely on a cell signal. <laughs> um, oftentimes uh, you, may, it, you may start out with a really strong cell signal and then just like that it can drop to absolutely nothing. So just know that if you're going to be boondocking and dry camping that you could be without a cell signal. And if staying in touch is something that is a concern for you, then things like um, personal location devices, I have a spot, that's S-P-O-T, which is a, I can push a button and it notifies um, search and rescue or my emergency contact where I am. So if something like that for safety is a concern for you, you might want to consider a personal locator. There's inReach, there's spot, etc. cetera. Uh, but just know that oftentimes um, you are probably going to end up losing your cell signal. That's another reason you might always want to have a paper map with you. You can't rely on your cell phone to navigate you out or into a place without a cell signal. So you always want to have a backup, whether that's downloading maps um, onto your computer or your phone before you go exploring so that you can have them offline or whatever that may be. But you just can't rely on a cell signal when you're boondocking. Okay, so again, the three don'ts of boondocking is don't block a road because inevitably somebody's going to need to get by. Uh, don't dump your gray water. It's illegal and 
immoral in my humble opinion <laughs> you know you're ruining um it, it, it's it's wrecking um the natural ecosystem of the environment that you're in and don't count on a cell signal because you often are going to lose it um, i'm going to add one more do to the list do go out have fun explore be adventurous and um, just respect the land and go out and have a great time and enjoy living close to nature. Enjoy the sounds, the sights, the smells of living in, um, um, you know, our wonderful mother nature. And for me, that's what boondocking and dry camping in an RV is all about. Really getting to live in nature. Look at this beautiful place I get to live which remember next week I will let you know where I am. So don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And thank you. All right. Uh, so that's my do's and don'ts of boondocking or dry camping in an RV. I hope you have found something helpful. As always, thank you everybody who supports me by watching, liking, subscribing, and joining my Friendlies with Benefits Club. I really appreciate each and every one of you. And until next time, always remember to be happy, be free, and be kind. Bye. Couldn't get Capone to sit next to me today. There's too much good stuff to smell around here. Let me show you. Hey, puppy. <laughs>